The latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. And we are evolving and we are seeing an amazing opportunity that is happening. Accessibility. Accessibility is, is one of our core values. It's even a part of our mission statement. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being with us today and each and every single week. Again, if you want to get involved, feedback at ami.ca is our email address on Twitter. Follow us if you're not already following us. Come on, come on, hurry up. It's at Double Tap Canada with the hashtag which is Ask Double Tap. I am Marco Flalo with Stephen Scott by my side each and every single week. Stephen, we're talking something close to your heart this week, not really close to my heart because... I honestly, Stephen, I don't read much. Do you read a lot? Well, you know, you say it's close to my heart. I'm not much of a reader either. Um, and, you know, it depends what you define as reading. Now, I know that I, I'm going to get myself into all kinds of hot water by saying this, but, you know, reading a book is very different to reading or listening to an audio book. Um, it's, some people say it's the same. Uh, I think it's different. I think one is reading, one is listening. Reading is about understanding the word. Uh, what is listening is taking in the words. Uh, so I think there's a difference there. But I listen to a lot of audiobooks, um, not as many as I would like to. I'm not the most well-read person in the world, I admit that. And, you know, when it came to growing up, I had real challenges with reading because, of course, I couldn't see that well, especially as a kid. I could barely see at all to read. Um, and they would try and give me large print books. That didn't really work. Um, I didn't learn Braille as a kid. Uh, so I was, you know, stuck in that point where, you know, I had to have audiobooks and there weren't that many around. When you were growing up, was Braille something that they introduced to you at all? Or was that something that your parents had to go seek out for you to try and give you that tool? Well, Braille, as I was growing up, and I think it's the same today, unfortunately, was really reserved for those children who were totally blind and for the adults who were totally blind. So if you were completely blind, you'd be taught Braille at school and you'd have access to the Braille libraries, which was brilliant uh, if you had access to that. But of course, the challenge there was getting access to the books you wanted because not every book was made available in Braille. Um, it would take a long time for the books to be created. They were huge as well. You know, a large book would take up several volumes of Braille books because they're so large. So, you know, there was lots of challenges there. Audio was the same. It wasn't as available as it is today. So you didn't have the ability to just go online and buy the audio version of the book. It didn't exist. Uh, you would have to either get the book read for you. Uh, I had that at school quite a lot. School teachers would sit down with a tape recorder and record my books or my notes or my information uh, booklets, whatever it was I needed, uh, onto cassette tape. I would then use a cassette tape player to carry that around along with a computer, along with a large desktop magnifier. Uh, going to class was, was an event for me. I mean, I, I had more uh, with me than Beyonce most of the time. Um, you know, it was always a, a, a real faff to go around. But, you know, that was the only way that I could access the printed words and text. Fast forward to today or fast forward to at least, you know, the century. Um, was there a moment in time that you felt that technology was at least catching up and giving people, you know, with low vision, uh, putting them on equal footing with people who can read? I think it was the day when I heard Audible by Amazon now um, talk about audiobooks as something that was for everyone. And they did that by promoting audiobooks for people who were out running or driving in their car and wanted to catch up with the latest bestseller. Instead of sitting at home or lying by the beach reading a book, you could listen to it on the move. And that changed things. It changed the conversation around audiobooks and that allowed audiobooks to start becoming more popular. And because they became more popular and because more people were buying them, the prices came down. Um, a good example was I bought a book that was about $25 uh, in audio form that was only like five dollars uh, in paperback um, you know the price disparity was ridiculous whereas all that seems to have gone away although don't get me wrong audiobooks still cost more to buy but you can get subscriptions and credits with things like audible and there are local libraries now that benefit from the work that audible's done because those books are often donated to libraries like cnib in canada like rnib in the uk and equally in, in libraries uh, around the world and you know that led to things like the Marrakesh Treaty coming along which enabled books to be uh, transferred across borders so when a book was read in London and England 
uh, that same recording didn't have to be reproduced in London and Canada, right? Uh, that wasn't necessary anymore. That book could transfer across borders. So things have changed. The attitude towards audiobooks changed. It became more mainstream and that therefore meant it became more accessible to blind people, of course, but also to everyone. That was when I think things changed in the audiobook market. Well, if you haven't already figured it out, we're talking all about reading and technology that enables reading for people with low vision. And one of those stories comes to us from Grant Hardy, contributor here to Double Tap TV. Uh, he's going to tell us about his experience, right? Absolutely. And Grant tells a great story. Uh, and I, I want him to tell it because ultimately he talks about his own experience growing up as a blind child and talking about some of those challenges I'm telling you about, about my own education. Um, but let's hear what, what, how Grant got on, because even though I'm saying to you, you know, the, the kids who were blind maybe had it a little bit easier because they had the braille and they had the access to the library, it wasn't as plain sailing as you might think. Hey, AMI reporter and Double Tap contributor Grant Hardy here from Vancouver. Growing up blind, I always loved to read, but getting my hands on accessible books wasn't easy because I had to get either a commercial audiobook out of the library or buy it at a hefty price, oftentimes getting an abridged version that didn't even include the whole story, or else wait months for an organization like the CNIB to produce and mail me an accessible format from all the way across the country. For my favorite childhood series, just six out of over 50 books were available to me in Braille, and this was the norm. As I got older, scanners became more mainstream. Hold each page of a book, completely stationary, against a glassy surface. Not an easy thing for a kid to do. And you'd eventually get an ebook, though it could be quite riddled with errors. At the same time, specialized blindness hardware for reading became readily available. Braille note takers and Fisher Pricey hardware, where you could load up ebooks and audiobooks on a storage card, connect headphones, and listen to your heart's content. But the problem was still getting my hands on ebooks. A hot new release on the day it came out? Yeah, not likely. Today, the accessible reading landscape is a thousand times better. The sighted world has finally woken up and realized what blind people knew all along. Ebooks and audiobooks rock. Many commercial books on platforms like Apple Books and Amazon Kindle are accessible. And in the blindness landscape, the CELA, Center for Equitable Library Access, gives you access to over a million ebooks through their own catalog and through the American site bookshare.org, all for free. You can read these books anywhere you want, like a computer or braille note taker. But one indie developer, Winston Chen, has single-handedly changed the way we read these ebooks and audiobooks with his app, Voice Dream Reader. For blind users, features like multiple navigation modes, speed adjustment, many high-quality voices, and the ability to pick up at the exact word where you stopped make reading a pleasure. And for partially sighted users, features like multiple magnification levels and font adjustment make reading visually pleasing. I use this app personally for my ebook collection of reading, but don't be surprised to find it everywhere from the students I've had in the classroom to devices right here at AMI. There's nothing like getting lost in a good book. That will never change. But what has changed since I was a kid is how easy it is to get my hands on a book where suddenly I feel like most books are within reach of my fingertips. But I wouldn't want you to think that I've ever gone back and read some of those sci-fi kid books I was never able to finish at the time. That would just be way too crazy, right? That is Double Tap TV and AMI's Grant Hardy talking all about his experience with the reading. And we're talking all about reading this week on Double Tap TV. I am Marco Flalo with Stephen Scott. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, a gentleman who hosts a show called My Life in Books on AMI-audio and an AMI-exclusive podcast. Stick around. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit AMI.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome back to Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being here talking all about reading this week on this edition of Double Tap TV. Get involved. Feedback at AMI.ca, of course, is our email address. If you're not already following us on Twitter, it is at Double Tap Canada. And use that hashtag, which is Ask Double Tap. Well, today on the show, we have a very special guest, a host of uh, a fantastic podcast and radio show, over on AMI Audio, that is My Life in Books. The host is Red Sale, and he joins us now. Uh, Red, great to have you here on uh, Double Tap TV. Hi, Stephen. How are you? 
I'm great, Red, thank you. Uh, so I wanted to get you on because I know you're very passionate about books. Hey, you do a show about it, right? So, you know, you're a passionate man about books. Um, what does reading mean to you? I've always loved books. I, I was a voracious reader as a child. I was one of those kids who just used to hide underneath the duvet with a torch and uh, hope that my mother didn't come and check that I was asleep. And I just, you know, gobbled up everything from Tintin to Enid Blyton to Alastair MacLean. And then I went to study English at university. So it's, it's always been my window on the world. When you began to lose your sight, Red, did you, I mean, I imagine a lot of things went through your mind, but did you think about losing the ability to read at least physical books anyway? I mean, did that go through your mind? It was the thing that scared me most. I got my diagnosis when I was 19 years old and I'd just gone to university to study English. And maybe for the first time in my life, I wasn't exactly reading for pleasure. I was having to read an enormous amount of books and really big, hefty books like Dickens. And... I'd already noticed that my my reading speed was getting much slower and I just didn't know why. And And then when I was given this diagnosis and told quite bluntly that I could expect to be totally blind by the age of 30, it just felt like a death sentence to me, to be perfectly honest. Red, at, at any point during your journey, did you think to yourself maybe that technology could be the solution to your challenge and, and help you read the printed word? Yeah, I got contacted fairly early on by the Royal National Institute for the Blind and they said look you know there are books on tape you can ask for them and you know for, for some of the books like the Dickens or the Milton it was I, I, I got these big chunky tapes come through the post but there was a bit of a wait time on them and I needed to read these books you know two or three a week um, and then produce essays on them and they were also read really slowly by these, you know, actors from the 1950s and 60s when they'd first been recorded. And so actually I just, I got the magnifier and the bright light and I just struggled my way through. And then the books that I wanted for pleasure, the books that were being published whilst I was, you know, whilst I was at university and afterwards... I'd have to wait a year or so until they actually got recorded. So, to be honest, technology just didn't help me, apart from the ancient technology of a bright light and a magnifying glass. You know, as someone who never really enjoyed reading physical books because of the challenges I had with it, and I guess you'll know about this as well, and you'll have come to this experience yourself, taking the information in audibly is quite different. You know, reading is a very silent experience for a lot of us. It's, it's all about taking in that information, just sitting back on a Sunday afternoon, you know, letting that information come in quietly. It's part of the, the joy of reading. So how did that translate for you when you had to change all that to audio? Yeah, you're diving into another world. And a little bit like sort of diving into water, it, you almost need to shut off your other senses and just let your mind swim. And I think it was, I'd got so used to being visual with reading, I didn't realise that actually now my eyes had been switched off, that I could just let my ears do the work. And I was still only using one sense, I was turning everything else off. And yeah, I mean... <sighs> Do I miss visual reading and that that kind of deep dive in and, and making the voices in my own head? Yes, I do. But actually, I think nowadays narrators are so good, they're so nuanced, that actually they do a fair amount of that for you. I, I heard a wonderful narrator called Lucy Scott describing it as theatre for one. And that's how she does it. She she is the entire cast of characters and they've all got a slightly different voice. And I think, to be honest, since audiobooks have become more of a mainstream activity, and for that I think we have really to thank Stephen Fry reading the Harry Potter books, the, the, the game has been changed and and all the narrators have upped their game and they are 
They are literary thespians, to be honest. Yeah, seriously. It is Double Tap TV. We are talking to Red Cell this week all about reading and technology for reading. I am Mark Aflalo with Stephen Scott. We're going to take a quick break and come back with more of Red after this. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. This is Double Tap TV. Back here on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys for being with us. We are talking all about reading this week on Double Tap TV. I am Mark Aflalo with Stephen Scott, and our guest this week is Red Cell, the host of My Life in Books, a show you can hear in podcast form on AMI Audio exclusives and also on AMI Audio. Red, I've got to ask you a question because we're talking about the experience of going to audiobooks and, and, and that you know line. But what tech are you using these days to actually enjoy the audiobooks? Because there's got to be, you know, a device in particular that you like. So, right. Predominantly, I use my iPhone um, and I'm linked up to the RNIB reading services platform and to Audible. And I just download my books straight onto my phone, stick my headphones in and pot around the house doing my chores and uh, avoiding doing other pieces, people's chores, to be honest. Uh, so, you know, I, I learned long ago that you can cook or iron whilst listening to an audio book, which I couldn't do when I was holding a penguin book in my hand and, um, and trying to chop vegetables. It just didn't work. So actually, I'm reading far, far more books than I ever did. But... Every so often, for my job, I get sent books as reader, um, uh, as early reader copies and or review copies, and they haven't been loaded up onto any of the electronic platforms yet. And I'll get those usually sent through something like Dropbox, and I'll download them onto my laptop. And because I don't want to be carrying my laptop around. I'll stick them on a memory stick, and I've got my friendly Sonics Sovereign MP3 player, which is, as you can see, it's big, it's chunky, it's got the kind of buttons that I can use because I climb rocks and my fingers are all mashed up. And it's just really simple to use. And again, I just plug some headphones in, stick that into the pocket of my fleece and wander around the house um, listening to that. I guess the only thing I don't like about that so much is that it jumps forward only in chapters or sections and um, so I can't rewind and listen to the um, listen to that sentence or paragraph that I missed again without having to jump back through the whole chapter but you know for for sedentary end of the day with a glass of wine in your hand type of reading it's perfect now red we know each other pretty well and i can say this with experience that you've because you've told me you're not the most techie guy in the world but it seems that you've got to grips with some of this technology the iphone at least right um yeah i the phone i have to say i i did end up moving away from um having an android phone to an iphone just because i do find voiceover and the general commands just much easier. Um, yeah, it's it's. I'd say it's relatively easy. It's easy enough for me not to get so frustrated. I give up and go and ask one of the sighted members of my family to do it. it it's mastering that sort of flow sheet of steps. Um, reading services. It's a bit clunky, but it's that uh, that's the one that it, it, you use with Dolphin Easy Reader. It's a bit clunky, but it it's good enough, and the voice recognition now is good enough that I usually find the book that I want and can download it easily enough. Um, Amazon, yeah, it's not so bad. I can uh, I I download my books off Amazon and load up the Audible app and and get it to play uh, on my phone. I've also linked it to my um, Alexa Dot, which is nice and easy because I just shout at that and it resumes the book uh, from where I last left it. Um, so, yeah, I'm getting... I think it, 
it gets a bit easier every six months. And whether that's partly because I get more used to using the technology or because the technology just gets smarter and smarter and recognises my commands better. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot happier with it than I used to be. The weird thing is, I'm actually happier since I've gone totally non-visual. Now that I can't see, it's forced me not to try and cheat, I suppose, trying to peer at it as well as using voiceover. And I think maybe I was trying to ride two horses at once and it's, it's easier now I've gone non-visual. You know, Red, considering where you were when you began losing your sight and where you are now in regards to audiobooks and, and reading at least, has the joy of reading come back to you? I am as happy as I was when I could read novels in physical form. I, uh, to be honest, I'm probably better off than I was because I have so many more books to choose. I pay my monthly subscription, which really, you know, it isn't as much as going out and buying that new hardcover book from my local bookshop. You know, I get it for the price of a paperback. It's there immediately and I can read it in bed at night when my wife's asleep without being told off for having the light on. Red, thank you so much for coming on to Double Tap TV. Thank you very much, Stephen. No, thank you, Red, and thank you guys at home for joining us this week. As always, if you've got something to say, let us know. Uh, feedback at ami.ca is our email address. We welcome all forms of questions, comments, and criticisms if you have to. Uh, if you want to reach out on Twitter, it is at DoubleTapCanada, and use that hashtag, which is at DoubleTap. On behalf of our guest, Red Zell, and, of course, Stephen Scott, I am Marco Flalo. Thank you guys for being with us this week. We'll catch you again next week on Double Tap TV. Hosted and written by Marco Flalo and Stephen Scott. Editing and motion graphics, Jordan Steves. Integrated Described Video Specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of Production, Kara Nye. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2022, Accessible Media, Inc.